What's up, Moneyverse? Dr. Dave here. Welcome to the Geek Lounge. This past weekend, I attended MCM Comic Con London. Blue milk, but blue rice. Yeah, let's give this a taste. Mm. Yeah, not bad, a bit bland. So I need to mix it in with the sauce. Alright guys, so in terms of Fungo Pop hunting, there were a ton of stores at the con. I didn't really want to focus too much on the commons that you see every day. There were, of course, loads of those. So I did try and focus on a lot of rarer pieces. We had some WWE, some what I feel were overpriced die casts. I always like to show off like some random stickers. That Primark one there is a bit ugly, as well as the Supersonic from SDCC. They had some black lights at this store. This Yondu here, the 2018 Spring Convention exclusive, Captain America Underground toys from Civil War, they had the Fungo Shop exclusive Kid Loki, as well as a Underground Toy Solo. They didn't see too many Underground Toys because they are now defunct. They have Bojack Horseman here. Uh, they didn't have the title of character himself, but they did have that Todd, Sh Todd Chavez, pardon me, which I am still looking for. A couple of Death Notes, some Chase uh, Naruto there, more Death Note, Rukia, Bleach. Um, there's El and Ryuk, as I mentioned, from Death Note. They had Vincent, Emil, Spider-Man, Chase, Alloy, Chases from Demon Slayer, Chases from Avatar, a Chase Venomized Doctor Doom. Again, Light there from Death Note. A couple of Spider-Man Chases, Alfredo Linguini there, TLC Chase, some Blink-182, some Buffy, uh, quite a few sort of rock, uh, pop rocks, as you can see there. Duff McKagan there from uh, Guns N' Roses. I do actually still need to add that one to my collection. Lars Ulrich from Metallica, some Motley Crue, Big Trouble in Little China there, a couple of Disney, Amy Winehouse, Grease as you guys can see, Sebastian from The Little Mermaid, a bunch of Star Wars Rebels, I think those are just going to go up and up and up, couple more chases there, this was like their main, um, not really a grail case, but some more expensive pieces, at least for this particular store, Lost, you don't really see too many of those as well, uh, anymore, pardon me, Home Alone, Animaniacs, Teen Wolf, they have the 2018 Spring Convention exclusive Padme Amadou, which you don't see too often a bunch more Star Wars the uh, Mandalorian there with the best car stuff I think you can still get that off the fungo shop if I'm not mistaken so I thought that was kind of a bit higher price 
uh, Nancy and Robin here, two packs, £75, though. That was crazy. A couple of chases from Avatar. This store was really, really hard to film at. It was very, very busy. It may not look it when I'm filming here, but I couldn't really get round to the side. This was a case that had a bunch of signed things. I think there's a Val Kilmer autograph there. Luther signed. A Allison signed. I'm actually not too sure who signed that Deadpool, to be honest. But a lot of these, I don't know if you guys can make out some of the prices. I thought this store was incredibly expensive with some of their items. A Steppenwolf there, a Red Guardian. I actually paused a bit because the guy did then interrupt me, um, saying, was I interested in any of them? And I kind of said, maybe, depends, but... In all honesty, guys, I felt these were real, real expensive um, in terms of what they were. This was around the other side of Stan Lee there. That's pretty cool. Hot Topic Spider-Man stealth suit. They had a bunch of other things here. The Luna Lovegood from Harry Potter. You guys can then see £750. Stephen Amell and an inscription. But for £750, is that really worth it? I'm not too sure. Mulan there. R2-D2, that Diamond uh, Galactic Convention exclusive. I then noticed the Joker bank robber that they had down here for £350. 350 I, I know that pop is worth a lot, but I'm really not sure it's worth that. The same with the Bane from The Dark Knight Rises. I'm pretty sure it goes for less than 195 Moon Knight, The Thing, Batman, a few other bits as you can see there. This store was very hard to film. These things were quite far away, but they had some pretty cool things as you guys can see. I did pretty much a quick pan shot. They had... Um, the uh, Hangover there, Kagoya Otsusuki, I still need to add that one to my collection. Bunch of other really cool things. Mr. March there from uh, uh, American Horror Story Hotel, pardon me. OG Attack on Titans as well. This was actually, though, my favorite store in terms of like grails and things they, that they had. Persona Toys there, PersonaToys.com. I will definitely be checking them out. Enchantress, Killer Frost, Dark Side, a Batman chase there. Batman Beyond, they even had the Joker 2-pack, guys. The Gemini collectibles limited to 480 pieces, £995. I will add that to my collection one day. That Professor X, I actually do already have that. She-Hulk, that Juggernaut was very, very cool. The A-Team, we had the uh, under Underground Toys, pardon me, Glow Chase Loki there. I did focus on that for some reason. You actually saved a fiver if you bought three. Funko Shop exclusive Zombie Moon Knight, couple of caps, Black Widow, Scarlet Witch, Doctor Strange there, the Chase uh, Spider-Man from the Japanese TV series, Bendy, uh, Sonic there, Tails, Eridim from the Witcher video game, the Chase Raphael, I'm probably going a bit too fast to really say everything here, Flocked, Knuckles, Super Sonic again, there was a Freddy Funko there, Ezra from Rebels, as I said, those will go up. A couple of Alligator Lokis, the Inquisitor, Purge Trooper, Flocked, Baby Nippet, Target Exclusive, Ugly Doll. I'm not even sure what some of these things are, to be perfectly honest. We've got some Blink 182 there, some NFL with that Toys R Us sticker. That's always pretty cool to see that. Toys R Us are back here in the UK, though. Uh, Mitski Sage Mode, as well as that Baymax Unmasked. I do actually own both those Funk Pops. Um, couple other chases here. Ichigo, there's that new holified Ichigo chase, although I'm not really sure if that's already worth £95. Maybe it is. Another Rukia there from Bleach, 125 I think, was was that cheaper than the last one? I think it was. A couple of Funimation exclusives of Vegeta Chase there, you guys would have seen at the top. Some Willy Wonka, another chase. Uh, Guillaume with the new special edition sticker as well. I do already own that one in my collection. Hunter Hunter, which I have only really just started watching. I think that's why I focus on that one. Kamugi Chase, I do already own that. Young Victor from Yuri on I some Hose Club, some One Piece, some Fairy Tale, Faye there, um, Naruto, again Chase, that Mitsuki Sage Mode again, a signed Amphibia Man, signed by Doug Jones with a certificate of authentication, a couple of One Piece, I'm in here from Attack on Titan, I really want to add this one to my collection, but yeah, for 250 guys, I just couldn't justify it, I don't think it is worth 250 either, if I'm mis not mistaken. Uh, OG Eren Yeager there, as well as the Akatsuki, uh, pardon me, the Anbu Itachi, which I do still need to add to my collection. I would have bought it if it wasn't the special edition sticker, a couple of Avatar chases, as you guys can see there. Uh, Gravity Falls chase, some Asterix, Coraline chase, I actually got that in a mystery box a few months back. Some really, really cool things, as you guys can see here, and it just goes on and on and on. Lightning McQueen, Tamatoa is that from, from Moana, the Entertainment Earth exclusive two-pack Dennis Nedry and Dilophosaurus, which I do own, a James Bond car, Pamela Anderson, a bunch of Big Bang Theory, as you guys can see there. Apologies for the light as well. It was in like this almost fabric case. As 
as of I would never know how you pronounce his name, but Michael Sheen was at the con, so you actually saw those like prominent throughout stores. People could buy it and then get it signed. A bunch of Doctor Who, the Chase Elliott Alderson. I do actually own that one. A couple of really cool Walking Dead figures as well. You know, Avengers are signed at Stephen Amell, and as you guys can see, much, much cheaper than that Green Arrow Pop. Maybe that Green Arrow Pop was worth a bit as well, I'm not too sure. Motley Crue, Kurt Cobain, you don't see too often. The Clicker, um, that Marty McFly there. I focused on this uh, Bebop because I do actually own that figure and didn't realize it had gone that high. Actually, I do own the Foot Soldier as well. Um, yeah, some Rapal, Dragpool, is that what it is? Randy Orton, didn't realize that figure had gone up. Um, I mean, maybe not significantly, but somewhat i then focused on the sticker i've never seen that sticker before i thought that was pretty cool a freddy funko there glow in the dark the og triple h the alloy as well from horizon zero dawn i knew it had gone up but i didn't know it was sort of worth around 90 pounds some one pieces you guys can see there more sonic more uh, Oran host club another couple of alligator loki's the chase smog that ghost rider i do actually own the glow in the dark px previews version of that a bunch of awesome figures from Big Trouble in Little China, a classic that I do want to get around to. You guys can see the deep there. I actually have the con sticker one of that. Some more Rebels, some more Naruto chases, Alien They Live chase. Tons and tons of really cool figures you can see there. Ghostbusters Well, This ET, was this like an OG ET? Because I, I couldn't really remember it. 70 pounds though. The Watchman there. Dr. Man had a 90 pounds. I think that figure does glow in the dark, if I'm not mistaken. A Chase Ash. Uh, some Home Alone, Star Trek Beyond, a bunch of Disney, you know, Toy Story here, Doug, uh, you know, Chase Cheshire Cat, Chase Tinkerbell, more Disney, that Luke Skywalker as a Jedi, that's a pretty cool figure, some Simpsons as you guys can see, Flintstones ride, G Goliath there from Gargoyles, that's the only one I don't have in my Gargoyles collection, didn't realize that had gone up a bit in price, the uh, Dom there as well from fast and the furious which i do also own uh, in my collection already and so there you go guys a little montage of the con as well as a funko pop in terms of the funko pops like i said there were a ton of stores but that's why i wanted to focus on grails and harder to find things rather than showing you guys the same funko pops over and over again and in all truth i could have filmed a ton more maybe even done like two or three videos but i did only attend the con on the sunday because we got back on the saturday night from barcelona well actually technically it was the early hours of sunday morning i was very very tired waking up to go to the con but yeah if you guys have been following along you know i said we were going on a short trip to barcelona and i said i would try and fit a barcelona fungo pop hunt in unfortunately guys i just did not have the time which sucked a bit because there were a ton of comic book shops a ton of toy stores you know geek shops that did sell fungo pops in the city uh but yeah i'm going to be heading back to barcelona i absolutely loved it had a great time the weather was amazing it was like 10 degrees warmer than here in the uk no rain pure sunshine um i mean it's surprise surprise raining in the uk right but uh yeah had a really good time we'll definitely head back out there and do a fungo pop in the future and just before i show you guys what i picked up at the con i wanted to go through a few pro and cons of the con i feel like i've said con a lot of times there and we'll start off positively with the pros i do feel the entry prices are still fairly reasonable for a con of this size i know some people will say it's a bit more expensive than things like monopoly events and whatnot and we'll get into that in just a little bit but i do feel for a con of its size you know the ticket prices are reasonable that would be my second point as well this does have a big comic-con feel to it is done by reed bop who if i'm correct they kind of run new york comic-con as well as emerald city comic-con as well if i am mistaken please do correct me in the comment section below thirdly the xl center is a great location it's pretty easy to get to it's a huge place tons of like restaurants coffee shops you know sandwich bars etc that are already in the center before like the independent stalls and retailers come in speaking of the independent retailers that's another pro there are tons of really really cool independent retailers like i said fungo pops tons of fungo pop stores a bunch of anime stores statue stores figures you know pokemon cards you guys would have seen there in the montage as well there was actually that was like an ebay thing uh, that they had going on there i think you could also create your own uh, unique trading card or something like that again i i kind of wish i had more time at the con maybe i will uh you know when it comes back i think it's in may next year um uh, you know, I maybe go for the weekend and do a little bit more because the one that I did in May earlier this year, I did only attend the Friday as well because again, I was going away uh, that weekend. So I could only attend the Friday one and this time I was actually coming back from being away so I could only attend the Sunday one. Why don't they, you know, book it, you know, 
book things around my holiday, please. And as for the cons of the con, guys, I mean, the first two are nothing really to do with the con itself, but I did just want to mention them. Why, oh, why is the government, or I guess it's the TFL, right? It's not really the government. Why are they closing down the Elizabeth line during MCM Comic Con? It makes no sense. You know, you're now limiting people in terms of their travel into the XL Centre. Like I said, it is normally pretty easy to get to. You've got the Docklands Light Round, you've got the Elizabeth line, but if you're cutting off half of the way to get to the excel center i just don't get it it's absolutely bizarre for a big event so it meant like the stations were just rammed the docklands light rail was rammed i actually did pretty well to get home uh, it's at customs house you were like at customs house to then walk through to the excel center and i actually managed to leave at a good time because i got down to the platform and then literally they had stopped people like queuing all the way up the stairs going all the way over like the balcony as well um and yeah people would have to wait for like two, three, four times, uh, like trains going past right before they finally got a train. It's just crazy. If the Elizabeth line was opened up, take away all that congestion and all that danger. We've seen, you know, those horrible stories out in South Korea, right? The the crushings and, and things, um, you know, over those Halloween celebrations. And this, you know, this kind of stuff could happen here. They did manage it, to be fair. The TFL staff did manage it pretty well, but it's always a danger when you are going to close off a line during something that is a busy event during a busy weekend during uh, half term as well with all the schools so lots of kids were also around and again nothing to do with the con but things are always subject to change and I did actually miss one of the guests I wanted to see which was Todd Habercorn who plays Natsu in Fairy Tale and Shikadai in Boruto I mean he plays a ton of other characters but I did actually take those two Funko Pops to get signed he did actually attend on the Friday and the Saturday but apparently there was like a family emergency or something and he had to leave um, and didn't attend on the Sunday, unfortunately, and that was the only day I was attending. I think David Bradley, he'd only been announced like a week or so before the con and then already had to cancel uh, for the whole weekend. He actually couldn't attend due to work requirements. He did actually tweet a video, which is very, very cool. Uh, hope to meet him one day and get my, like, strain. Um, what was the character's name? He was like the um, Albert Satrakian, was it? No. I don't know if it was Albert, but it like Zatrakian was definitely his surname. I would like to get that pop signed uh, by him one day. And that actually leads me into the main con of the con guides, and that is the signature slash autograph pricing. I don't really go for photo op, so I can't really speak too much on the photo op pricing, but the signature autograph pricing for MCM Comic Con is very, very expensive compared to other cons. And we joke whether it's like a London tax or an MCM tax, but yeah, they are often like 10, 20% more than other shows. We've been going to some Monopoly events. Monopoly events I think are really really cool. Uh, they've got Liverpool Comic Con coming up in what two and a half weeks I think now. Uh, really looking forward to that but the prices are so much more like reasonable. Um, like I said 10 to 20 percent less for some of the guests. They had a ton of voice over actors here which is good for me. I'm a big big anime fan. I think a lot of people still felt that the, um, the guest list for this, you know, this Comic-Con was not that great, uh, you know, especially compared to Monopoly events. And I would tend to agree, I do feel Monopoly events do tend to get better guests, if I'm being perfectly honest. But these guests are still really cool, especially if you are an anime fan like me. I still took a bunch of things. They're just sitting there. I will show them off to you in just a second. But yeah, guys, the pricing, I mean... They, they, they change things. I, I don't know if these prices existed before. Someone would have to let me know. I only attended my first MCM back in May of this year, but they didn't have like, you know, extra pricing for getting a Fungo Pop sign. They didn't have extra pricing for getting a quote uh, on your Fungo Pop or an item that you were getting signed. Whereas they did this time round, you know, uh, Fungo Pops were considered a premium format item. So uh, I think... Uh, so like Max Middleman, for instance, the, the voice of uh, Saitama from One Punch Man, he was charging, I think, like 45 or 55 pounds to sign like prints and things like that. Uh, but for premium premium format items, it was actually £65. And if you wanted to quote, it was an extra, uh, uh, pardon me, an extra £20. So yeah, I ended up paying £85 to get something from him signed, £85 to get something from Christina V signed. Um, maybe even Megan Shipman as well. Uh, I mean, you know what, guys? I don't want to, like, be too negative, but I do think that's a little bit, like, really... And, uh, I mean, MCM are the ones... Like, some of the staff were saying they're the ones who... Like, like the, um... 
the uh, the guests themselves are the ones who drive the pricing. I, I've never known if that's entirely true. I know they'll have a fee to bring them in, but I don't know how much of the guests, do they take all the money? Is that literally their cost they charge for that? It could be, you know, someone, uh, if you are a bit more averse on how Comic-Cons work, do let me know in the comment section below how that whole pricing structure works. Because if it is the guests charging, then I do feel, you know, that's really not the cons problem but then it is like oh, come on guys really do you have to charge that much um you know just to write like a little quote and as well like sign a fungo pop maybe they're worried about people like signing things and making money off in the future i don't know you know let's stop with the negativity let me show you guys what i got and we'll start with this so i can just wear it, it is the thinking cap that dustin wears in stranger things well like a replica so we'll pop that on there i am actually meeting gator matarazzo is that how you pronounce matarazzo matarazzi however you pronounce his name i'll Make sure I check that before I do meet him at Liverpool Comic Con next month. But yeah, guys, I didn't actually pick up any Fungo Pops, but like I said, I did get some things signed. The first guy I met was Max Mittelman. As I said, he does voice Saitama. He does a whole bunch of other characters, of course, but I absolutely love One Punch Man. It's an absolutely hilarious show. I got him to sign crap. I forgot to buy Kombu Soup Stock, and then he, of course, signed it with his autograph as well as Saitama there pretty cool it's not like quite screen accurate because when he says that quote he is in like tracksuit um like a whole tracksuit outfit uh blue I think it is um as opposed to his hero outfit carrying the shopping bag as you guys can see there but yeah I thought that uh, it, it just kind of fit with the fact that it was carrying the shopping bag so yeah he was also a really cool guy when people bought like selfie combos and whatnot he was taking like five or six selfies not like just one really cool guy really short actually as short as i am maybe even a little bit shorter though i guess i am like you know, twice his width right and then i also met christina v and got my kalua sign here from hunter hunter again i'm very very new to this show um so i didn't really know any kind of like quotes or anything like that and had to really look it up and i thought i'm not an assassin anymore i'm a hunter was very cool she really liked uh the one that i picked as well and she did it in a couple of different colors if you guys can make that out there and she did also draw this on the side which was a pretty cool addition again really really cool person uh lovely lady both like she's very beautiful as well again i'm not trying to be a simp or anything like that but um also just really cool really down to earth really chatty uh lovely to meet her but again she was the same as max the pricing yeah little bit expensive but yeah i, I guess i don't have to travel um when it's london i live in london so like traveling costs hotel costs they don't exist for me when like in terms of Liverpool, Northern Ireland, Scotland, Wales, you know, uh, Manchester, things like that. Whereas I then do have to travel and get a hotel. So, yeah, I guess you just kind of do this, right? And I also got to meet another lovely lady and get a Funko Pop signed. It was Megan Shipman, who voices La Brava from My Hero Academia. She does also voice Sasha from Attack on Titan. I unfortunately do not own that Funko Pop yet. She does voice a whole bunch of other characters as well. But yeah, this was pretty cool. It is the Gentle Criminal and La Brava 2-pack, and she signed it on here. I'll die before I'm going to be separated from you, gentle. And then she signed it with a bunch of hearts as well, if you guys can make that out there. Very, very cool. I do hope to meet the voice actor for him one day. I've actually forgotten his name off the top of my head, um, so we can then get that signed. Probably in, like, blue as well. I think it would be pretty fitting. I have to, I'd have to, pardon me, find a fitting quote as well to go with it. And the final Fungo Pop I got signed, guys, as well as my first ever signed Naruto Fungo Pop, is Pain Almighty Push signed by Troy Baker, another really, really cool dude, of course, known more for uh, video games, uh, you know, voice acting in video games, but he did actually start out in anime. Pain, one of my favorite characters. I actually said he was my favorite villain. I said that to Troy Baker and he said, is he really a villain? And I was like, you know what? You've actually got a point. He signed it with the famous quote, this world shall know pain. Signed there in the purple to go with the Rinnegan eyes, the red, uh, signed pain to go with like the akatsuki cloud robes and then of course the orange i guess to go with the hair for his actual signature almighty push there at the top yeah really really cool uh, he didn't actually charge any extra for quotes so i was really happy with this and it was only 50 pounds so it was a lot more reasonable than the other guys um but yeah so stoked with this i now have to get a bunch a uh, bunch more hard protectors uh, especially a two-pack one i've never actually had a two-pack one for that gentle criminal and la brava but yeah guys as i said i didn't pick up any more fungo pops but there was one other thing i did pick up at the con which is very very cool and that other awesome thing guys is this pokemon terrarium 
done in the shape of a Pokeball. How cool is that, guys, with the starter Pokemon of Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle. I will actually give you guys a 360 of it as well, so you can appreciate it in all its glory. Yeah, look at that, guys, the grass. The three starter Pokemon, as I said, Bulbasaur is having a nap, whereas Squirtle and Charmander, they just look look very very happy whether they're about to play a prank on Bulbasaur who knows we've got a little stream going on there some nice detail there these I don't know these like bonsai tree is that like the right word or cherry cherry blossom trees maybe I've never really been a um I don't even know what the word is like a tree enthusiast I know there's probably a more technical term uh for that someone can let me know that in the comment section below if they do know it a little bit of a nick there though uh on the bottom which is a little bit annoying because this wasn't well actually now I'm seeing some of the like tape going around as well maybe could have done a better job but it these are like custom made things um, I'll be perfectly honest it was expensive 150 pounds um, but I just really really liked it to be honest um, and yeah just had to grab it uh, I, I kind of feel like it should have been more like 75 to 100 if I'm being honest. They had smaller terrariums. Um, I actually can't even remember what the store was called. I'll, I'll put a little comment and a link to them in the description below. But um, yeah, the, the smaller terrariums were like 50 pounds where it had like one character. They did have like even bigger things in more like Persplex cases and things, but I didn't actually ask what those prices were. But they still looked really, really cool. But yeah, just the fact it was these three starter Pokemon. It's my era of Pokemon when it started from my childhood. And uh, yeah, just thought I have to have it, even though it was a little bit pricey. And well guys, that is gonna do it for today's video. So first and foremost, thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to spend with me here on the Geek Lounge. It is very much appreciated. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If so, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Drop some comments below. Did you guys attend MCM Comic Con? And if so, did you enjoy yourselves? And what did you pick up? And we've got plenty more content coming your way, guys. More Funko Bob unboxings, more Star Wars content, more Naruto content, continuing our celebrations of both of those mediums. Just tons and tons more coming for you guys. For the rest of this year and beyond so make sure you stay tuned for all of that and more what is the easiest way to stay tuned it's very simple subscribe hit click smash that subscribe button and enable those notifications so you don't miss out on any of that future content guys thanks again for watching today's video and we will see you on the next one peace out nerds